Hello, I'm Michael Nowak from Variety Food Services. Thank you for joining me today as we discuss strategies for successfully implementing offer versus serve in your school lunch program. Most high schools already use this form of service, so incorporating it into the elementary and middle school lunch programs should go relatively smooth with the right equipment and training. Note that offer versus serve can also be used in school breakfast programs too, but will not be covered in this video. Offer versus serve allows students to choose from five different food components for their lunch each day. A minimum of three components must be taken in order to constitute a reimbursable meal, and one of these components must be a fruit or a vegetable. The goals of offer versus serve are to minimize plate waste and to encourage schools to offer more food choices to students. Now, let's look at the five required lunch food components in more detail. The first component is the meat or the meat alternative. This is normally the entree and usually consists of chicken, beef, fish, poultry, or other meat substitutes. Second are the grains and breads, which by the way, must be 51% whole grain beginning the 2012-2013 school year. Often the meat and grains components are combined in the entree, such as hamburger and bun, spaghetti and meat sauce, etc. In these cases, the entree item counts as two components. Third is the vegetable component. Students can have up to two servings of vegetables. If the student chooses no vegetables, then they must take a serving of fruit to constitute a reimbursable meal. Fourth is fruit, which can be whole, canned, or juice. If the student chooses no fruit, then they must take at least one serving of vegetables. The fifth and final component is milk, which must be low-fat white or non-fat flavored. With an offer versus serve setup, it's important to allow the child to choose and not to discourage or overly encourage them to take certain food items. We want students to take only the food quantities they plan to eat. Current studies show that up to 80% of some meal components are thrown away each day, untouched due to the child not understanding the cost of the waste or just not wanting the item. Now let's take a look at the offer versus serve process in action. A successful lunch line has an entry point where the students line up. From there, they move toward the hot entree serving window or area. Then, they will go to the side components table. After that, the child will proceed to pick up their milk or possibly water, and then they will head to the checkout station or area where a station attendant checks to make sure all components are accounted for. Here you can see the hot entree serving area or window. Hot entrees should be pre-trayed just enough to stay ahead of student consumption so that they can remain hot. Students may skip the hot entree serving area or window altogether and pick up their tray at the side components table. As you can see here, the ravioli counts as two components. The ravioli noodles themselves count as the grain, while the meat sauce counts as the meat. In the next example, you can see that you can also optionally provide the vegetables at the hot entree window as opposed to on the side components table. Again, make sure to pre-bowl vegetables just enough to stay ahead of student consumption so that the vegetables can remain hot. The student now has the option of taking just the entree, just the vegetable, both, or neither. The side components table holds fruits, grains, additional trays, and vegetables if not at the hot entree serving station. Students can choose any of the items from this table but must remember to take at least a fruit serving or a vegetable serving. As mentioned earlier, the vegetable component may be kept here or at the hot entree window. Note that children can take two vegetable servings if desired. Students can use both sides of the table if space permits. Remember to let students choose which, if any, items to take.
Here at the milk station, a student can grab a milk if desired. Remember, milk offered must be low fat white or non fat flavored. You also must offer at least two fat varieties. The final station is the checkout station or area. This is the last stop for the student. Here, an attendant must verify that the student has taken a reimbursable meal. Remember, a student must take a minimum of three components in order to constitute a reimbursable meal, and one of these components must be a fruit or a vegetable. Also remember, many entrees count as two components if they include a meat and grain. This student does not have a fruit or vegetable component on his tray. He then returns with the vegetable component and his meal is now acceptable. This student has the three necessary components and her meal is now acceptable. This student does not have a vegetable or fruit component on her tray. She then proceeds back to the side component table grabs a vegetable bowl and returns to the checkout station. Her meal is now acceptable. This student has all the necessary components for a reimbursable meal. This student is missing a third component for his meal. He then proceeds to the milk cooler station where he grabs a milk carton component and returns to the checkout station. His meal is now reimbursable. As you can see, the offer versus serve methodology is a simple system. Its primary benefits are more control over food choices for the student, much less food waste, lower operational costs, and increased speed of service. Studies and experience have shown students and administrators prefer the offer versus serve methodology. It results in multiple benefits to both the school food service program and the students too. Thank you for your time today. Variety Food Services appreciates your business and we look forward to helping you implement a successful offer versus serve program in your school.